Hello and welcome to Read Read. Today I want to talk about Gustav Flaubert's The Dictionary of Accepted Ideas. Uh, sorry for the fact that I've made two videos or two short videos in a row uh, and also three videos on one day for those who have noticed that my hairstyle hasn't changed over the past three weeks. Um, but I feel like I just wanted to make a video talking about uh, this book because I really didn't know anything about it. I only happened to recognize the name when I saw this in a bookstore. Um, I'll tell the story about <laughs> finding it later, but um, uh, I just happened to see a vague mention of the Dictionary of Accepted Ideas when I was reading through the introduction of Madame Bovary, and when I was in a bookstore, I was kind of dawdling in the used section of the the used poetry section, and I was kind of tossing up between. I had in my hands uh, a collection of uh, poems by Boccaccio, and I was really like, oh, you know, I even sort of went downstairs to go and pay for it, but then I brought it back upstairs because I knew it just, it wasn't hell yeah, so it was a no, and then when I put it down, I noticed that this was sitting on a little, like, a plaque or a stand, and I just picked it up, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe this is here. I didn't think that this was the sort of thing that was even published, and uh, I picked it up, and I was so glad that I found it because this idea um, now, I haven't read Flaubert's Letters, which I do really, really want to read, uh, and, but apparently, I think he mentions it in this, but over the course of his life, Flaubert would uh, eavesdrop and listen to common cliches and platitudes that he would hear people say, and he would eventually sort of write them down into his little, like a little compendium or a dictionary, and after he died, uh, it was released as you know, the Dictionary of Accepted Ideas, and it's... So what it is, it is basically a dictionary of words, uh, and then Flaubert will... There's sort of one of three or one of four ways that it will be uh, uh, listed or described. The first thing is that he will just say what the common people say, or what the common cliché is. Uh, two, uh, he will say what the common cliché is, but you can tell that he's sort of just making fun of them. Three is that he will say what the common cliché is, and then he will say a variation or a form that he thinks or that he likes, uh, uh, just him being generally clever. Uh, or the fourth thing is that it will be a completely just out-of-the-blue interpretation of of it. So sometimes he will talk about things, he'll say that you should thunder against certain things, like for bachelor's degrees, uh, but then other things that he likes he will describe as being quite very swank. And I just thought it would be a fun thing to try to, you know, if, if any of you can find this and read it, it's, it's so funny, and it kind of reminds me, the way that it's written, it's got a sort of aphorism, aphoristic vibe, it almost seems to be written with the same kind of backhanded charm or wit of uh, Nabokov's strong opinions when he's talking about uh, different authors that he likes and dislikes, but yeah, I figured I would just flip through randomly, read some funny examples, and hopefully convince you to try and seek this book out uh, and find it and read it, because it is, again, it's another uh, great one-day read, and um, yeah. So I'm going to read a couple of examples from Flaubert's The Dictionary of Accepted Ideas, and I hope you enjoy. Achilles, add fleet of foot. People will think you've read Homer. Archimedes, on hearing his name, shout Eureka, or else give me a fulcrum and I will move the world. There is also Archimedes' screw, but you are not expected to know what that is. In light of our modern AI art, how great is this? Art, shortest path to the poorhouse. What use is it since machinery can make things better and quicker? Boldness, always premature caused by youthful excesses, or by the hatching of great thoughts. Brunettes, hotter than blondes. Blondes, hotter than brunettes. Celebrities, concern yourself about the least details of their private lives so that you can run them down. Chess, symbol of military tactics. All great generals good at chess, too serious as a game, too pointless as a science. Coffee, induces wit. Good only if it comes through Havre. After a big dinner party is taken standing up. Take it without sugar. Very swank. Gives the impression you've lived in the East. Comets. Make fun of our ancestors who feared them. Earth. 
refer to its four corners since it is round. Exception. Say it proves the rule, but don't venture to explain how. Felicity. Always perfect. If your cook is named Felicity, she is perfect. Gibberish. Foreigners' way of talking. Always make fun of the foreigner who murders French. So we found it. We found the man who started the teasing foreigners for trying to speak French and doing it poorly. Gordian knot. Has to do with antiquity. The way ancients tied their neckties. Grammarians. All pedants. Ice cream men. All Neapolitans. Italians. All musical, all treacherous. Lads, never give a commencement address without referring to you young lads, which is tautological. Latin, the natural speech of man spoils one's style, of use only for reading mottos on public buildings. Watch how you quote Latin tags, they all have something risque in them. Literature, idle pastime. Machiavelli, though you have not read him, consider him a scoundrel. Melancholy. Sign of a refined heart and elevated mind. Oh. Memory. Complain of your own. Indeed, boast of not having any, but roar like a bull if anyone says you lack judgment. How funny is this? Moon. Induces melancholy. May be inhabited. Negresses. Hotter than white women. Paris. The great whore. Heaven for women. Hell for horses. Which I just realised is... Is he talking about Paris from the Iliad. <laughs> this is so funny. Plant always cures those parts of the body that it resembles. Redheads see blondes, brunettes, and negresses. Seasickness. To avoid it, all you have to do is think of something else. Spelling. Believe it as absolute as mathematics, useless if you have style. Time, comma, hour. Thunder against. Lament the fact that it is not poetical. Call it a time of transition, of decadence. Thank you for indulging. I hope you had as much of a laugh as I had uh, reading this. Obviously, there are a lot more entries in here, and I saved some absolutely great ones for you all. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, try and see if you can find a copy of this somewhere, because it is so funny. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed. I have a couple of uh, not book-specific uh, videos planned, and but uh, partly because I have a big book that I am reading, which I, um, uh, I can already tell is going to be, like, and if not the number one book. So thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.